Sure. The problem is how to get them to happen. I, I, I know that you, you're well traveled, and in fact, you've been invited to address parliaments in, in, in different countries. Different countries, That's and right. you've spoken to presidents and leaders around the world. How did? Why? Why did they call you? What did they ask you to come to say to them? Why and why would they do that? Because I'm going to need to <laughs> how it can happen in Nigeria. So how yes. did that happen? Uh, the first okay. thing is this: um, I've I've been to 86 countries. And most of the countries that go to, from South Africa to Bolivia to Peru, uh, even to Austria, when I'm invited there, I come in with a plan for the nation. I don't come in with a plan from the United States. We look at each nation as a unique entity, what the aspirations of the people are. But, but do they call you or you say, I want to come talk to you? They call me. Okay, so why, that's the question. Why do they call you? Because yeah. they know of what I've done in other countries. Yeah, no, what do they, they know what you've done, but what do they want to change? Because I'm trying to see how we okay, can they for call example, you. Also <laughs> say, yeah, why for example, yeah. when I came to Bolivia, I was invited by the Supreme Court of Bolivia. Mm -hmm. Somebody told them of what we had done in Peru. When we came to Peru, we addressed the issues in the country and we provided solutions for the country. Mm -hmm. Each country is unique. Yeah. When I come to Nigeria, Nigeria has such great potential. You see, the glory of a leader are the people. Nigeria is rich not because of the oil, but because of her people. Yeah. That's your greatest resource. Today, a lot of countries are moving away from oil and all those things, they, they are building other things. Singapore, all those countries never really had what we have mm. because their economies were developed for different reasons, not just for oil or yeah. things like that, like yeah. we are depending on it. Yeah. The true economy today is ideas. We are in the idea economy. Absolutely. Google, Facebook, all those things, they come in 12 years, just blow the market open. But the problem is Nigeria with all of the smart people we have, the people are never given opportunity. For example, how can a country producing oil not have enough power generated to power its industry and everything else to keep productivity in this in this nation? So, doctor, so the is, is, has culture got anything to do with any of this? You know, the way we're looking at Africa, especially the sub-Saharan Africa. You know, this uh, this this nature that they seem to have that all doing the same thing, all in the range of underdevelopment. Is it a cultural thing? Yes, you have a culture of corruption. Culture. Is it part of African culture? Corruption? Not necessarily. So how, where did it come from? How did it not necessarily. You see, yeah. culture is the acceptable way of doing things mm. in any society. Yes. So it doesn't necessarily mean this is how we started out, yeah. but we adopted some bad habits along the way. That's part of the problem. So today, we, we, and we did it with such unanimity. Oh yeah, because it Africa. starts gradually. You yeah. see, when no one opposes, for example, mm -hmm. if I go to a hotel mm -hmm. and I see something wrong in the smallest area, I challenge it because if I allow it, it becomes the culture of the place. Yeah, right. See, it begins. Change begins with us. Mm -hmm. If we want change, yes. the first thing we're going to do is begin to no longer tolerate substandard living. So you're speaking to the people right now, not That's just right. the leaders. Okay. That's right. So people have to challenge them. You've got to challenge systems. Yeah. Okay. You go to a restaurant and the service is not first class, call the manager and let them know what's right. Mm. Because they have to understand customer service. See, those are the things that we ignore in Africa. We say, oh, everybody's doing it. Let me just do it too. No, it begins with somebody saying no. That's how change begins. Mm. Change does not come by osmosis. It comes by people having a, a righteous indignation, a holy discontentment, and you said, enough is enough. And then you raise your voice. Most people don't raise your voice. They just die silently and just go with the flow. Yeah, but, th but this, this culture thing for Africa, is it, is it from the days of the slave trade and then into colonialism and, and that? Is, that? is that what it is? So how did it just happen? Well, the that, thing is, we can blame that, yeah. or we can look at ourselves and say, we are the problem. Because yeah. everybody can blame, well, yeah, you Yeah, but we blame the, it, but, but, but it happened. Yes, it happened. Yeah. But that does not, you cannot use that as an excuse okay. for what is happening today. For example, in the United States, the African Americans are complaining about slavery 
They're not slaves today. They said, well, it's, it passed down through and we didn't have the opportunity. We understand those things. But today, you're given opportunity to go to school. Yeah. Take those opportunities and run with it. We, we could say the same thing, Rwanda. We could say, well, we had genocide. And they didn't use that as an excuse. Yeah. Failures always make excuses. Successful people take action. Absolutely. That's the difference. You cannot make excuses and take action. You can have both. You can either have one or the other. So the problem is we have blamed everything on everything instead of saying, okay, we have a problem. Maybe that's See, one of the things I found out, find about Nigeria, we're very proud of our country. Mm. Regardless of how terrible things are, we're proud of it. And we're even proud of our craziness. It's true. Yeah. When you tell people, this is not right, they say, well, you, you're not patriotic enough. Don't, don't, ever, don't ever challenge my being patriotic or not because I challenge something that's wrong. How, how do we produce good leaders? How do good leaders emerge? It's very simple. Uh, were they born leaders or were um, they get training? You, you or, or see, how does you happen? have to be exposed to what's good. Exposed, if it, you mean outside, you go outside? Not of only outside, area? through books you read, okay. through the way people are taught, it has to, it has to start somewhere. Okay. Maybe as I'm talking to people now, somebody is being challenged to yeah. say, enough is enough. Yeah. Maybe it's time for Nigeria to change. Yeah. Other nations rise up in a moment, and it takes maybe a person or somebody else and create change. Change begins with you. In, in other countries that you visited, the, their leaders, did they go through like academies, they go through leadership mm. schools? Some of them were just workers on the streets. Some of yeah. them were in the university. Some of them uh, went through politics, uh, just different varied backgrounds. Yeah. But one common trait is that they had, they, 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 there was something that was a cause that they believed in. Yeah. There was something yes. greater like, like than, personal, a, a they yes, yes. Th than personal yes. enrichment. Yes. There was something they believed in that they were willing to take their lives, just like the United States. Yes. How did it start? The United States, it wasn't the United States, it was a colony of England. Yes. And then when they started taxing them too much, they, they, uh, it started with the Boston Tea Party. They had to kick the tea into the Boston Harbor, and the next thing you have, you have was the revolution. They said no more taxation without representation. The king just wanted to tax them, and, and they had enough. But, but the, were they doing that because they were one people? They were people of common ancestry. They were no. Europeans. No. Because they, they were here in, in Nigeria. They say, we've got Hausas, we've got Yorubas, we've got Ibus. They just to talk about the main tribes now. They came, not to talk they of came the from Holland. They tribes, came from Holland. They came from the UK. But that's Europe. Europe. Yes, but it's Europe. Yes. But guess what? There were slaves that came also from, different, from, yeah. from Africa. And people came from different places, not just only from Europe. People came from Asia. No, but, the, but the guys that made the, the initial decision to, to form the United because States were you white start, people. You, you, well, you start from somewhere. Yeah. Somebody has to start from somewhere. Yeah, okay. So we in Nigeria, we're all blacks. Okay. The 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 northerner, that's a, that's a good one. yeah, the yeah. northerner is no different from the south. Absolutely, yeah. That's we bleed the same. That's a good one. We probably eat the same food. Yes. You know, they enjoy the meals from all parts of Nigeria. Those things are only shadows of the real thing. Yeah. The real thing is, do we have a shared destiny? Mm. This nation can be the most amazing nation, yeah. or we can keep pretending we don't have an issue. So my thing is this, you need a cause that you believe in. You have to become a leader with integrity mm. that cannot be bought. Mm. You have to be a person that is looking not for your own personal gain. You see, public service should be honorable. It should not be a place where you go and enrich yourself. It should be a place where you're sacrificing for a greater good. Yeah. But that's not the case here. What's the gain for sacrificing? The thing is, you have. What was the gain for it? What What's the gain for sacrificing? Yeah, for sacrificing. The thing is, you have a better nation. No, no, to, to you personally. Personally? Yes. Why do you sacrifice? Yeah, why would a person sacrifice a, a, a politician, some leader at the top? Why should they sacrifice? What, what do they gain from that? The thing is, is, see, the gain you have is not selfish. It's selfless. Yes. See, when we become selfless, how do we ourselves? make that? How we? How do we popularize that? Make that to be in vogue for the people, so they realize that, you know, this guy, you know, look at the sacrifice that he made for the nation. Look, maybe, we, we honor him for that. Maybe we just need a new and a fresh radical leader yeah. that will not put up with this. Yeah. See, we need to step. Some of the young people I'm speaking to, even some people that are older, can still start this revolution from the heart of people. You see, we, we, we don't have to fight people. Mm. We don't have to become physically violent. 
But we have to raise our voices and say, no. You see, we don't have to even yell. Mm -hmm. Yelling doesn't make you right. See, we have to have the facts on our side. Okay. We have to have a narrative that goes beyond intellectual stuff. It reaches the hearts of the people. Mm -hmm. So those are things we can do to change things. You see, if it reaches the heart, it can reach the head. If people see your passion, they're drawn to you, and then we explain to them the reason why, you can build an army quickly of people that are willing to pay the price. They count the cost. That's what the people did in the United States. Let's look at those nations that have succeeded. What was the key? They had a common and a shared destiny. And they said, like what uh, Patrick, Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. He was willing to lay his life for liberty. But today we have a different culture, especially in Africa, where corruption runs the day. Everybody's thinking what I can get now, and they don't care about the future generation. We need leaders that can build for the future, not for eight years. We need leaders that said 30 years from now, my policies will make this nation a better place. On that note, Doctor, I want to thank you so very much. Thank you for having me. You're wonderful. Me. I Always appreciate wonderful. You. Appreciate I appreciate you. you. Good thank job. you. Good I appreciate job. it. Yeah.